So we have two major types that most programmers talk about, but there is a third and it's very distinct, which is object oriented programming, procedural programming and modular programming. Somebody told me that I didn't know what I was talking about because I said that procedural programming is very good and it's very robust and it is. But when it comes to large scale applications, you need to introduce modularity. So let's take a look first of all at object oriented programming and understand this is not modular programming and it's all based upon what your class or constructor function is used for. So what is it used for? Well, for example, if we have a database and each record in that database is an object, then we can have a class or a constructor function that makes an object for each record in the database. So this is good. This is object oriented programming. We are creating objects to resemble objects that we've stored in a database. And you can clearly tell when you're doing object oriented database because you can think of it like an object store, like a database. Can the data from this object be stored in a database? Is that logical? If it is, then you're using object oriented programming. Next, procedural programming. Procedural programming has been a big hit recently. And what we're talking about here is having variables and subroutines and so forth. And the, the subroutines, the functions can change the data and they can change the variables and change the application state overall. Now this is perfectly fine for small scale applications, but we need to add something more for large scale applications. We need to add in objects again, and this is called modular programming. So I want to stress, Modular programming is not object oriented. Again, it comes back to what you're using your class or constructor function for. Modular programming is where we take procedural programming and add modularity to it. And the way we add modularity to it is we create objects. If you think about it, objects, we could take away an object and replace it, or we could take that object and give it to another project. We can copy it across to another project. It makes our procedural paradigm more modular. It gives scope and with scope also comes privacy as well. As you know, you can have private members in your class. You can also do this with JavaScript with a self invoking function whereby you can create private variables and you can create private methods as well. You can do this. So by this modularity, we have a bit more control than just the standard procedural programming. So when we take procedural programming and then when we add modularity, it's called modular programming. This is for more large scale applications and our modules can talk to one another. And again, you have to look at what the class or constructor function is used for. Is it used to construct a module object or is it used to construct an object from a data store? That's how you can clearly define the difference. So for example, if I was to create a class for a library like Laravel in PHP, or if I was to create an object like jQuery in JavaScript, doesn't matter whether it's a self invoking function, whether it's a constructor function or whether it's a class, what is it going to create? And logically speaking, when you make a module, you're not storing anything in the database from the module. So for example, I don't want to store the methods in the database. I don't want to store any of my properties for my library in the database. No, the module is used to manipulate data in the database or to pull out data from the database, but there is nothing in the module that we're taking out and sticking in the database. It's a module. It's a piece of logic for our application to work and function. But if it's object oriented, it means that that class is used to create like an object store. It's used where we can take part of that object and we can store it in a database. That is the major difference between object oriented programming. Then you have procedural programming, which is fairly flat and basic. And then you have procedural programming and modularity called modular programming. And by modular programming, what we have is the ability to have scope, have privatization of properties and methods. And this ultimately is modular programming. And that's what most people do today is modular programming. 
and they mislabel it as object-oriented programming. They are two very different style type. Please make sure you understand the difference and procedural and modular programming are more together, those paradigms, whereas object-oriented programming is way off there with object stores, databases, data storage, so forth.